everyone has a right to have their own emotional boundaries. Like physical boundaries, emotional boundaries define separateness. Emotional boundaries are the property lines that separate our thoughts and beliefs from the thoughts and beliefs of someone else. Sadly, we live in a world where there are so many people that refuse to allow sometimes their family members to have boundaries or they refuse to respect the emotional boundaries that other people try to enforce. If you're watching my channel, Finding out that you had emotional boundaries sometimes is new for a lot of people. Setting boundaries is difficult because it's almost foreign. It feels uncomfortable. It's new. However, enforcing boundaries with difficult people can sometimes feel impossible. If you're watching my channel, you know that there are people that refuse to acknowledge your boundaries. They don't take no for an answer. They incite guilt when you try to enforce your boundaries. They don't respect your perspective. They minimize, criticize all of your opinions, views, and needs. Toxic or difficult people dismiss your emotional boundaries, trespassing over them as if they didn't exist. In my face-to-face -face coaching, I get a lot of clients that tell me, Michelle, I finally realized that I had no boundaries. I finally learned what healthy boundaries look like. I'm putting them down, but people in my life are not respecting them. So I'm hoping that this video will help you to know not only how to put boundaries down, but how to enforce them when you're dealing with difficult people that try to deny you your boundaries. The first thing to understand is you almost have to expect people in your life to not comply with your new boundaries. If you grew up with no boundaries, if you grew up thinking that you weren't allowed to have boundaries, and if all of your relationships were relationships in which you were always doing what the other person wanted, where it was not reciprocal, where, you're bound, where you had no boundaries, but you respected the boundaries of the other person, when you begin to change, obviously toxic people are not going to like it. But I want you to understand that even healthy people will have a hard time with it because there's a change in the relationship. I've said this in other videos that we actually teach people how to be with us. And so if for a long time, the relationship was us or you not having any boundaries, never saying no, never sharing and standing up for your perspective, and then you suddenly shift and you change, even a healthy person is going to kind of feel that something is a little bit off. They're gonna be surprised. And I give this tip because I think what happens or what I see happen a lot in my coaching practice is that people are so excited that they finally learn that they can have boundaries. They're so excited to start putting them into place and then they get shocked when other people don't respond how they expected them to respond. That's why the first tip is to expect people to not comply. Expect people to be surprised. Expect people to test your boundaries because remember, this is new for them. So they don't understand exactly where you're coming from yet. So if you expect it and, and this happens, it's not going to feel like the rug was pulled out from underneath you. The second tip is to understand this truth. Boundaries are not for the happiness of others. They're designed to protect your happiness. Think about it. People don't put down fences on their property so that their neighbors are happy. They don't put down fences hoping to get a positive response from other people. They do it to protect and to clearly define their property lines. Emotional boundaries have the same purpose. They are there to protect our emotional property lines which are our thoughts, our beliefs, our values, our perspectives. When we truly embrace this reality, it makes it easier to put down a boundary when we notice other people getting upset. That's another challenge that I often see in my coaching practice is that people put these boundaries down and then 
it throws them off emotionally when they see that other people respond negatively to their healthy boundaries. But if you remember this truth, then you recognize that it's okay. People are allowed to be upset if you put down a boundary. People are allowed to disagree with you if you have a boundary. They're even allowed to have a different perspective and be disappointed. But even though they feel or react in those ways doesn't mean that we take our boundary down. Emotionally prepare yourself. So this step is vital, especially if you were raised with toxic parents that didn't allow you to have boundaries as a child. Some parents sadly punished, shamed, criticized, or humiliated their children any time that child tried to exercise a boundary or tried to have their own opinion or their own view of something or their own feelings. To have that happen in childhood is devastating. And a coping skill that children wind up putting into practice is they stop having boundaries. If having boundaries causes punishment, shame, criticism, the silent treatment, well, they stop having boundaries. So then as an adult, they come across a video like this and they realize, well, I want to have boundaries. And when they start to try to enforce them, they wind up having emotional flashbacks. So in order to be successful at putting down boundaries, you have to know what your triggers are. You have to know what emotions or feelings or fears come up whenever you are trying to put boundaries down. I am so excited. I just ended a nine hour work day. That's not the exciting part, but I'm going to take the longest, best, hottest bubble bath with some candles and some music and just give myself some much needed me time. Hey, what's up? Hi. What are you doing here? Uh, I came through your door without knocking. So remember that party I told you about? No. Uh, if I didn't tell you, you can totally come, seriously. Um, but here's the deal, I have everyone coming over and I need my five bedroom, five bath apartment cleaned. So I thought you could help me because you're such an awesome friend. So can you please help me? I want to I can't can't say no. no. I want to say no, but I can't. Just she's going to think I'm selfish. No. She's going to hate me. If I say no, she's never going to talk to me again. You're allowed it's like this, this feeling inside of me. It hurts yourself. the thought to say no. And yet I want to say no. I, I need no. some downtime, just but I can't seem no. to be able to You're allowed just tell her, let her know. To she's going to get mad. I hate when people are mad. I'm when people get mad at me, if myself. I say no, I just can't take it. Take I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know how to respond. I, I don't know what to say. No. This is just awful. I can't do this. Let's do it. So get in touch with what those intense emotions are that come up at the thought of putting down a boundary. And that leads me into the next tip, which is heal those wounds. Work through emotional flashbacks. That's the only way that you'll be able to put down the boundaries in your life now. Healing emotional flashbacks helps us to heal the past, the triggers that cause intense emotions to come up inside of us that wind up causing us to feel paralyzed as far as the behaviors or actions that we want to take. So working through them is necessary in order to be able to start having boundaries with difficult people. Because the truth is, difficult people are going to poke at each one of those triggers. But if they're healed, you will still be able to put down your healthy boundaries. And I'm gonna leave a link somewhere up here to a video that talks about working through emotional flashbacks. And always remember that if the videos aren't enough help for you, there are always coaching links in my description box below each video. And there's always the group workshop where you can work along with other people to overcome complex PTSD. The next step is to visualize. Visualize yourself putting down boundaries, especially with difficult people in your life. This tip is super powerful for people that are surrounded by um, individuals that refuse to respect your boundaries. Maybe your situation is that you can't get away right now. You are around these people and you don't have a choice. And if every time you're trying to put down a boundary, you're wind, you wind up 
having one of your triggers that we talked about, one of your fears, uh, prevent, prevent you from being able to put down the boundary, this step is super powerful. And I want to read something that I have taken right out of my journal, Living with Intent, which again can be found in the description box below. It says, according to research using brain imagery, visualization works because the neurons in our brains interpret imagery or whatever we're imagining the exact same way as they interpret a real life action. When we visualize an act, the brain generates an impulse that tells our neurons to perform the movement. This creates a new neural pathway that primes us to act in a way consistent to what we imagined. All of this occurs without actually performing the physical activity, yet it achieves a similar result. So if the thought of putting down boundaries with difficult people in your life causes you to feel an intense amount of fear, then this step is really helpful because you start practicing it in your mind and your mind sees it the same exact way as it would as if you were really doing it. So it kind of builds up your boundaries muscle so that when you are doing it with the difficult people in your life, you, you're able to handle it and work through whatever comes up. The next step is to recognize the truth to one sentence statements and then pick a few that feel comfortable for you. In other words, pick statements that are going to help you when you are anticipating people in your life not respecting your boundaries. So some of those one sentence statements can be, thank you for sharing your thoughts, but I need you to respect my boundary. I appreciate you sharing your perspective, but that's my decision. Thank you for sharing your concerns with me, but I've already made my decision. You may not understand why I made this decision, but I need you to respect it, please. I appreciate your concern, but I've got this. I'm handling it in the best way I feel fit. And then you have to uphold your boundary regardless of how somebody else feels about it. Now, there are people that will refuse and they will not stop because their thought is, I'm gonna pound and pound and pound until he or she lowers her boundary and then I'm just gonna trespass over it the way I always do. For those individuals that refuse, that absolutely refuse to respect your boundaries, then there are three things you can do. The first is you try the one sentence statements that put your boundary down. The second is if they continue, if they continue to push, you disengage. You can say, well, I, I don't want to continue this conversation anymore. You can, if you're on the phone with somebody, you can let them know that you have to go, but you firmly let them know that there's nothing more to talk about. There's nothing more to discuss. And the last step, if they don't, if they still refuse to respect your boundaries, then that's when you have to contemplate, do I want this person in my life? And that's when many people choose no contact because it's a last resort. And oftentimes it's the only way to stop abuse and stop people from disrespecting your boundaries. I hope those tips help. If you need further help and more personal help as far as overcoming the side effects of narcissistic abuse, make sure to check out my three-month workshop in the description box below.